Digoxin is an essential medication every nurse needs to know about in a clinical setting and every nursing student needs to understand for the next generation NCLEX. We will be going over the mechanism of action, therapeutic use, administration, side effects, toxicity, nursing monitoring, patient education, and interaction. This is a big topic, so let's get NCLEX ready. Medication class. Digoxin is a cardiac glycoside. First, what is a cardiac glycoside? It is a medication that increases the output force of the heart. It helps the heart muscle to have a stronger contraction and pump more effectively. If someone has a heart rate that is too high or stroke volume that's too low, then digoxin is given to decrease the heart rate or improve the stroke volume. Indication. Digoxin is given for mild heart failure, arrhythmias such as atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. Digoxin should help with lowering the heart rate and maintaining a healthy heart rhythm. Contraindication. Do not use it in patients with ventricular fibrillation or acute myocardial infarction. The contraction of the heart and blood flow can be affected and lead to death. Therapeutic range. The therapeutic levels of serum digoxin ranges from 0.8 to 2.0 ng slash ml. This may vary from clinic to clinic, but this is the most common number that I've seen on the NCLEX. Digoxin toxicity. Nausea, vomiting, bradycardia, confusion, fatigue, dizziness, or vision changes are signs and symptoms of digoxin toxicity, which occurs when there is too much digoxin in the bloodstream. Hold the medication if the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute in an adult, less than 70 beats per minute in a child, and less than 90 beats per minute in an infant. Hypokalemia, which is a decrease in potassium level, is a risk of digoxin administration, so the patient must be closely monitored if the patient is taking digoxin and a diuretic. Injured kidneys and being an elderly patient can also place the patient at risk for digoxin toxicity. If the kidneys are injured, then the digoxin won't be excreted out properly and it will stay in the bloodstream. This will result in digoxin toxicity. An elderly patient has a decrease in GFR, which also affects how the kidneys will excrete digoxin from the body effectively. Nursing consideration. The nurse must listen to the apical pulse for a full minute. Remember what was stated earlier about when to hold the medication. Hold the medication if the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute in an adult, less than 70 beats per minute in a child, and less than 90 beats per minute in an infant. The nurse must know the signs and symptoms of toxicity. Know the therapeutic range of serum digoxin level and notify the healthcare provider for any abnormal findings. Fluid status monitoring is essential as well. We should watch the amount of fluids that's entering and exiting the body. Daily weights play a role in helping. Education. Educate the patient on taking the medication consistently and to not switch brands. Be aware of the signs of toxicity. If the patient is experiencing any of the side effects, the patient must report to the healthcare staff immediately. A high potassium diet is encouraged due to the risk of hypokalemia. Let's go over six true or false statements to help you absorb the information. Statement one, digoxin is used for patients with heart failure. This statement is true. Statement 2. Digoxin is used for patients with atrial fibrillation. This statement is true. Statement 3. Digoxin is also known as lanoxin. This statement is true. You may also hear the medication's nickname, which is DIG. Statement 4. The therapeutic levels of serum digoxin ranges from 0.8 to 2.8 ng/ml. This statement is 
balls. The therapeutic level ranges from 0.8 to 2.0 ng slash ml. Statement five: Assess the apical pulse for one full minute before administering digoxin. This statement is true. Statement six: Digoxin is used for patients with ventricular fibrillation. This statement is false. Do not get digoxin to patients with ventricular fibrillation, which can affect the heart rhythm. Okay, that was our full digoxin review for the next gen NCLEX. Before we test what we've learned so far, a quick reminder to grab your 160 free digital flashcards at cutynurses.com slash start. And if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like us to make more, please subscribe to our channel. Now, let's dive into five digoxin practice questions. Question one. The nurse is providing care for a 40 years old patient who is on digoxin therapy. Which of the following laboratory values should be monitored closely? A. Serum potassium. B. Blood urea nitrogen. C. Complete blood count. Or D. Blood glucose level. And the correct answer is A. Serum potassium. Rationale. While all of these laboratory values should be monitored, serum potassium should be closely monitored. Digoxin toxicity is worsened by hypokalemia. On the other hand, too much potassium actually reduces the effectiveness of digoxin. Question 2. The nurse is providing care for a 53 years old patient who is scheduled for digoxin administration. Which of the following actions should the nurse perform? A. Administer digoxin. B. Assess the blood pressure. C. Assess the apical pulse for one full minute. Or D. Assess the apical pulse for two full minutes. And the correct answer is C. Assess the apical pulse for one full minute. Rationale. Taking vital signs is important, but assessing the apical pulse for one full minute is essential prior to administering digoxin. Digoxin should not be given if the pulse is less than 60 beats per minute. The nurse must withhold the dose and notify the healthcare provider. Assessing the apical pulse for two full minutes is not necessary. Question 3. The nurse is providing education with digoxin administration to a patient with heart failure. Which of the following dietary recommendations is most appropriate for a patient taking digoxin? A. Increase sodium intake. B. Restrict fluid intake. C. Decrease potassium diet. Or D. Increase potassium diet. And the correct answer is D. Increase potassium diet. Rationale. Digoxin has the potential for hypokalemia to occur. Increasing food high in potassium can help with maintaining potassium levels. Encourage potassium-rich food, such as bananas, avocados, leafy greens, and oranges. Question 4. A nurse is providing care for a patient and is preparing to administer digoxin. Which of the following statements from the patient require further action prior to administration? A. I feel nauseous and everything appears yellow. B. I like to go for walks after my medication. C. I like to take naps in the morning. Or D. I feel a little dizzy after I wake up. And the correct answer is A. I feel nauseous and everything appears yellow. Rationale. Reports of nausea and yellowish vision can indicate digoxin toxicity. Further evaluation must be done immediately. Digoxin must be withheld and the healthcare provider must be notified as soon as possible. The other statements do not warrant an emergency. Question 5. The nurse is reviewing the digoxin level of a 49 year old patient with atrial fibrillation. Which of the following digoxin levels should be reported to the healthcare provider immediately? A. 1.0 B. 1.5 C. 2.0 Or D. 2.5 And the correct answer is D. 2.5 ng slash ml. Rationale. The therapeutic levels of serum digoxin ranges from 0.8 to 2.0 ng slash ml. 
While 2.0 is too close to comfort, 2.5 is way out of range and indicates digoxin toxicity. Awesome job on completing the 5 NCLEX practice questions. Looking for more tips and tricks to make your journey even more fun and engaging? Check out my next video where we dive into more essential nursing tips. Thanks for stopping by and let's get NCLEX ready together.